We're in a time of throwaway technology. I give you 30, 40, 50. I know you'd see it my way. Only some of the stuff that gets thrown away isn't dead. No? Merry Christmas, baby. I got something else you like. What is it? It's a sleep. Electronics presents its new model, the Mark 13. The Mark 13 is self-repairing, capable of recharging its storage batteries from just about any power grid, including the sun. And when it wakes up, it'll become something entirely new. I gotta see. It's important. Meet me in one hour. A creature that combines the technology of a computer, the deceit of a human, and the killer instinct of a machine. Chase, listen to me. This is serious. Jail is in trouble. I didn't see anybody! Get ready for an encounter with some seriously heavy metal. Hardware. Mr. Coffin Camp, how's every little floating thing? There is a limit. Even to the imagination. Halsey was working on something big. Cornerstone technology. Where our greatest creations meet our deepest fears. People are so anxious to change their faces. What about their personalities? Their very souls? You are about to go beyond that limit. <laughs> the new you from Eunice. But even the greatest discoveries... You have a special brain, a very special brain. ...have a price. You need those numbers. Your life. You want him brain dead. Who said anything about brain dead? Who the hell are you? What do you want? You could be the patient, and Halsey could be the doctor. Just give us those numbers, Halsey. Just burn out the core. He's in the hospital. A little shock therapy will help you relax. Help me. I'm not dead yet. Because you're not dead. Don't let them take you into surgery. Until you're brain dead. Originator of Pet Cemetery. <laughs> Arthur Conan Doyle, author of Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Michael McDowell, creator of Beetlejuice. <laughs> George Romero, director of Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> now, these four masters of everlasting horror <laughs> bring to the screen four tales of overwhelming terror. <laughs> I warned them, but they wouldn't listen. Tales of diabolical fate. You promised you'd never die! <laughs> Tales of ghastly revenge. Grow, O oh light. Rise, O oh light. Come forth, O oh light. Open his eyes. Tales of ruthless evil. <laughs> that has killed three people in this household. I don't believe this. Kill it. 
bury it, and bring me its tail. Tales from the Dark Side. Well, that just about takes care of that, doesn't it? Come, live the nightmare of your choice. Tales from the Dark Side. The movie. In 1998, six million violent incidents took place in American high schools, including 29,927 teacher fatalities. The public school system has been reduced to a battlefield. But the Board of Education has just found a solution. Tommy! The perfect solution. You're next, Mr. Cope. <laughs> For the class of 1999. What are you? The class of 1999. These androids were supposed to educate the students. Battle droids, Miles. Battle droids. To graduate is to survive. Houston, Texas. It's Christmas. Someone special is coming to town. And it's not Santa Claus. I'm coming, please. Jack Kane, a cop who does things his own way. What are you doing? Shortcut. He's sensitive, hey. understanding, and kind to strangers. Merry Christmas. But all that's about to end. I'm coming, peace. Three well-armed men have their throats cut before they can even draw their weapons. Who could possibly move that fast? Aliens. Say what? Are you crazy? It's true! You need a psychiatrist, Jack. Your psycho stole a lot of heroin to kill people with. What are you gonna do? Tell them we're, we're fighting drug dealers from outer space? Huh? <laughs> Look out! The human body carries a small electrical charge, right? You tune the disc to the charge and then... What the hell is going on here? As far as you're concerned, this case is closed. It's not our problem anymore. I've had a bad day. Dark Angel. Hold on! Far into the next century, the Earth's prognosis is hopeless. Folks, we got a break. Lock out those windows! Its population. Ah! Helpless. Here, a man desperate for revenge. Harry M. Stark. An outland, bounty hunting, garbage collector. And a woman praying for freedom. She targets the parents. Nobody's perfect. Join seven travelers on a daring journey. Your only chance is if we stick together. A journey of hope. Things can get worse than they are now. Things could be a lot worse. 
a journey of no return. Vanity, Lyle Alzado, and Michael Ironside. Neon City. Well, I'd appreciate it if you'd, uh, if you'd send a, a copy to all the members and indicate that... Uh... Just fine. You lost your arm in a car accident yesterday. We've transplanted another arm for you. How does it feel to have someone else's arm? Dad, it's sort of gross. Well, that's not how it looks. It's how it works, right? I think there's something the matter with me. Oh! It's the arm. Billy! There's something wrong with the person he used to belong to. You have this guy's arm. You don't have his personality. I want you to run my prints. Any past record I had would show up on the printout, right? You put a killer's arm onto my body and you didn't tell me. That arm can't do anything you don't want it to. How do you know that? Where does evil live? Does it live in the soul? In the mind? Maybe it lives in the flesh. Maybe you got some kind of demon inside of you these days. Why doesn't anybody want to ask any questions about these operations? I hit my kid. I tried to strangle my wife. I have nightmares every night. I want this arm off! Don't you realize what I and my team have accomplished with that arm? Take the kids and go to your mother's. Don't pack, just go now! We're making history here. Imagine if your fears were real. I see images, and some of them are really violent. If your dreams weren't dreams at all. <laughs> memories, but not memories of anything that ever really happened to me. And your identity... What is your name, Eddie? ...is the one they gave you. Eddie, what oh. happened? <sighs> what? It's like somebody else is living in my body. I want you to take a crack at him tonight. Eddie Kay is about to discover he has two lives. Hi, Eddie. I don't know you. We're operational. And both are in danger. a target. Now, he's a time bomb. Don't move! Time bomb. I've been expecting you. It is the right of the people to provide for the common defense. Does 
this rebel army have any money? It's not enough. It is the right of the people to promote the general welfare. This is our annual fundraising drive, and we would like you to contribute $10 million. It is the right of the people to rise up. What the f do you want? Money. Money? You guys sure kill a lot of people for a little money. It is the right of the people to bear arms. To wage war. What does it take to set a country free? McBain. I got the textbooks, the diagrams, the cadavers. This is the real thing. Scalpel. Bigger scalpel. Better. Clean cut through the derma. Suction. Easy now. The tractor. And cauterize. Just nudge these intestines over to the right. Bone cutter. Uh-oh. Nicked a bit of the liver there. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Pancreas. <laughs> It only hurts when I laugh. What's happening? Jennifer? You are dead. Don't worry. It's just a routine operation. The doctor will see you now. <laughs> I unloaded a full clip. 450 Magnum. Point blank. It disappeared. He can hear its heartbeat. Where did he go? He knows it's out there. Somebody must have seen something. He knows what it can do. Are you telling me? There's something running around loose in this city, ripping the hearts out of people and eating them. Maybe he eats them for breakfast. Now it's really pissing him off. Foster! And his new partner. I work alone. Makes two. Paranoid people with guns are a menace to society. You'd be paranoid too if you had a dipshit like this following you. Stuck up nonos and serial homicide. Oh, terrific. It has no motive. The only thing we know for sure is that he's not a vegetarian. No! It has the DNA structure of all its victims. It gives no warning. You ready to die? But one thing's for certain. We gotta get bigger guns! It ain't no pushover. Two, yeah! Bingo! We wanna get to Cannon Street. <laughs> no, you don't. Yes, we do. Boy, are you pushy. I wouldn't say this thing thinks it's Satan. I'd say it is Satan. Rat bastard! Satan is a deep shit. Get out of there! Ah. Five seconds! Okay, four, three, oh. two, oh. 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 Rutger Hauer. Split second. Nice timing. Split second. <laughs>
three stories below ground, halfway to hell, and no way out. What they give you? 31 years. You are about to enter the fortress, a privately owned maximum security prison operated by the Mentel Corporation. John Brunnick, the most decorated captain in the history of the Black Beret. Prisoner 95763, step forward to be intestinated. You have nothing. You are nothing. We will monitor your behavior. I don't think you realize your predicament. You have nowhere to hide. We will control your thoughts. The law is clear. We must maintain the population balance. We will invade your dreams. This is an unauthorized thought process. So touchy. Disobedience will not be tolerated. It's been in there for three days, and no one has ever lasted four. You will be enhanced and reprogrammed to be a more efficient human being. When my kind are in the majority, there will be no more overpopulation. A high-tech prison. Who started the incident? Built to withstand anything. Let's find out. Except an innocent man. We go tomorrow morning. Activate the strike clone. Christopher Lambert. Fortress, where the punishment is the ultimate crime. Going out won't be fun. Oh, but it's gonna be a trip. Six men set out on a journey through the Colorado Rockies. They were looking for gold, but what they found was that they were completely lost. I'm Alfred Packer. This is my horse, Leanne. Tell me something, Frenchie. How does it feel to be riding my horse? Oh, come off it, Packer. Everyone in this town has ridden your horse. You can't find yourself a pretty girl. Colorado has plenty of mountain sheep. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a great time. A bigger mountain sheep. So let's build a snowman. We can make him our best friend. We can name him Shannon. Golly, I never thought I'd be sleeping next to a naked man on this trip. Leanne! 
Did you lose your horse back there? Come on, wait, 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 our food was on that horse. <laughs> Gross, Packer. In the tradition of Friday the 13th, part two, and Oklahoma comes the first intelligent film about cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell kind of language is this? I don't know, just keep laughing. I was on top of you. All the guys I just got to know. I'm shatterproof! There's nothing you can show me. I'm still Santa's tall, so you all can blow me. Know what I'm saying? It's true, after what I've been through. People don't really see what's going on in here. Oh, this is so cool. Exactly what kind of work do you do here? I do genetic research. Is this dog an innocent victim of the billion dollar vivisection industry? And this shit! I can't believe how attached he's become to me already. I want Max back. We're not talking about a street mud here. We are talking about a million dollar research app. Thank you, Max. Sweet. See, Max is not your typical dog. He's a genetic crossbreed. Yeah, Max! Yeah. And sight, hearing, strength, stamina, the ability to climb with jaguar-like agility. What I am trying to tell you is that in the right hands, Max can save thousands of lives. But in the wrong hands, it can be a deadly weapon. We're in big trouble. He's coming apart. He is going to sneak. friend.